Okay, so, put simply, on my little swan donkey, I notice her rear brake pads are almost out, so due replacement. So I go to replace them, unfortunately there's some kind of issue with mine. This one's not mine, mine's back on the donkey at the minute. Um, it wasn't until it was all back together that I realised it just wasn't going to work with the problem it had. Uh, the problem it had, uh, Benelli TNT 125, little monkey bike thing, I call it my swamp donkey. But, um, you know, this is the brake on it. But yeah, put simply, my problem was this one. I see you've got boot sliders on the caliper now, these are just important. Uh, as important to get cleaned and serviced as it is the main pieces here and the problem with mine because uh, my friends donated his so I can find out what was wrong with mine and I found out because basically mine it was slowing on this one but on this one it was locked tight out there because basically when I tried to change the pads pissing all the way back in with two new pads with this piece back on because this all goes together like that put simply and there's a groove there that your rim should go between mine didn't do that well not well, didn't do that but one of the brake pads because of how that boot slide was stuck it won't allow the rim to go through there and I was just trying to figure out how on earth this moves or how it was meant to move because there's very little information on these bikes especially the Benelli TNT 125 there's not as much information on it especially in the finer details and the finer bits of service very little information and when you go to look up for parts on this in the parts diagram replacement it just comes as one whole unit can't get any of these bits like you might be able to find another that fits that maybe a piston as well same with the seals, you can find the right size, but a lot of these pieces and whatnot you can't actually get. You might be able to find you these, get hold of them somehow, but I don't know if you can actually get hold of these bits. And mine, it's seized in there good, so I didn't know if it screws out or pulls out. Thankfully, I've had a friend donate his, and yeah, now I know that is meant to do that. Mine was locked in place like that, it just don't pudge. And because there's rubber there, what I might try doing is heating this area up or get some fluid down there, heat this area up. Because I now know, I've even seen in there, the rubber ends just about there. Because I was afraid to put some heat on it. Cause I put some good heat on it, I'd break any season normally. And I should be okay putting some fire here, hopefully. And I'll break it loose and I can clean the inside then. It ain't too bad. Um, yeah, I thought I'd put the recording on while we give this a bit of clean up with what tools I have at hand. It's absolutely goshing it down outside and yeah, just work inside and get it sorted. Um, first and foremost, I just want to give it a good general clean down. Um, first and foremost as well what I need. I need water. Soapy water. Good thing about being in the kitchen, we've got plenty of good soapy water. That's the main thing to start on. Soapy water toothbrush gets into the worst of it. Um, I suppose for video purposes, I do have one in bonus here. What I'll do is I'll start from scratch again. So everyone can see how these actually come apart. Make sure this will get some recording. There we go. Get to the back. And there's a nut here. So when you take it off the bike, and there's a nut here and as well. I think it's real. Well. Yeah, when you take off the bike, you'll come and get it like that. Don't worry about this hose, I've just put a spare hose just to clog and same with a bolt. Just to fill that up and so nothing gets inside. We don't want any crap inside. We want to try and get it off. Um, 
So first thing you would start doing is you want to remove the pads. This is unscrewed, pads come out. Remove this bolt here, it's a 13mm Italians. And then that should just slide off like that. If it doesn't, then this is probably why you got some brake issues. And then this is what helps us sleaze in as well. Because as your brake pads wear, this moves up and along to, to accommodate for the brake pad wear and floating pads or floating brake caliper as they say etc that's how it works and these need to be clean smooth and greasy I can change that very quickly that one's all right that one's in good condition the back end um, we can give that a good clean up same in there gunk in there but first and foremost you just want it clean to start off with all areas in there there should be some metal plates here as well. I've not got the metal plates on me. But pretty much like one here that holds the calipers and then there's one that go here at the back. I've not got them on me at the minute. The same again, you can't buy them. You have to buy the whole finger as one unit. But I'm sure I've seen it all clean the caliper up, it's not too difficult. Soapy water, brake cleaner at hand to get the worst of it off. But give it a good overall clean to start off with. Also because it's not on the bike and I've not got a grease gun or anything at hand, I won't be able to pump this piston out. If you give the brake pedal a couple of pumps, you'll get this out a bit more and you can clean it a little bit better. I can't do that in a minute, so I'm going to clean it up as best I can. And then when it's on the bark, I can do the rest. Okay, we'll clean up. You don't have to be too picky with the outsides. Or... The main internal bits here is where, you, where your concerns are. But for handling purposes, while you're handling it, the more you get off the merrier. The toothbrush just works brilliantly for these kind of jobs. I just can't get any toothbrushes in this house to keep up with how useful they are. Electric works, it's, you know, wiping tiny connectors, getting into scrub connectors. Phenomenal things. <coughs> there it is. Just a nice little scrub with a toothbrush. Let's get the worst of it off. It's the worst of itself. A nice spray down. You'll see all the ickiness come away. See as well, that's clean up a bit. It's a few bits of rust there, but there's a way around that. Before we touch onto that, I'm going to see we've got this part here. So, pop them in there for now. And here as well, where the boot's going to slide. Make sure you get rid of any. Mine seized up there and I'm going to get all this mud out now. Something like this. It's not a difficult job. I mean, a lot of people worry about working on brakes, but they're not.
difficult. Unless you're faced with a combi brake system like one that left EVFRs, that's a complex one. That every mech will tell you, even if they know how to do it, it's just very labour intensive, just like doing the valves, and it's very labour intensive. So it's a single well, these come as um some reason on the mini bike, this TNT one to four it's combi brake system. But I'm not sure if I put the video up or not, but there's a video out there where you can easily separate the links, well, separate the combi brake system and just pull the combi line out and then it's just two two brakes in a row. And then what I did on my actually on the front one there's actually on this one there's one piston, on the front there's three pistons and a combi brake system and the rear actually only activates one or the front brake lever activates two pistons and for crazy things I actually took that third one and linked that to the front so all three pistons work on the front brake because if you do it the other way then you kind of lose two, lose a piston on the front Skin really do not get along with that. Bit of memory cloth. And all you gotta do here is see where the bits of rust are. Very, very clean on there. WD 40. I might have it at hand. I do. Uh, it's probably best you stick the brake clean on this because of how close we are to the seals. All you want to do, light emery cloth, give it a bit of a rub, nothing too drastic. I mean I'll probably link this on the bike before. Too deep the piston because obviously it's quite close to the seal. Um, and if anyone's wondering about his bike, why I have his brake and why would just let me have his brake in hand? Um, it's because as well, this is as well. I don't know if anyone knows the Blaney TNT 125s. You have to be very careful with that engine. Because there's quite an issue out there. I don't know if they've actually done anything about it, but the um, is it the uh, output shaft bearing? I mean, output shaft bearing on these on the Blaney TNT one to five engines, or well, any engine that's got that. Well, any of these engines, but uh, put simply. It's the, I'm pretty sure it's the input main, um, no, it's the output shaft, main output shaft bearing, and they're very common to fail. And if they do fail, it's a whole bottom end rebuild. But it's very, very common. Um, good preventatives is regular oil changes more than what you would normally do I mean probably every thousand or so miles make sure you got some fresh oil we use the f best oil you can I use Castrol Castrol's finest and I don't put any anything less in there and keep the oil very well checked place that as often as you can um, other than that 
I'm thinking same with your chain as well, keep your chain in good condition, make sure that's always working alright, not too slack, not too tight. Um, and also as well, I know it's I believe there's actually a bolt on the left side, if you've got sometimes that if it's sticking out too much, just tapping against the chain, that probably speeds it up. But yeah, you have to watch out with them engines. And these unfortunately have suffered that issue. However, my previous engine that drowned, the top end is all gone to Kaputsky, however the bottom end wasn't too bad. Everything seemed okay, all the bearings down my end were okay. So, he's getting his engine out, we're going to do a Frankenstein. Let's see if we can get, use two engines to make a working one. A fun little project as well, I'll try and record that. Uh, no, as you can see, a bit of emery froth shines up, it's quite difficult to do the bottom bits. No, but if it is being a bit stubborn, there is a trick around it. Back in a minute. to one side. Uh, the best way, I mean the piston's not too far, not far out enough to do this properly, but it's a good way. So like that, you'd wrap it round, but actually you kind of need a bit more piston to do this. See the worst of it. I think we'll wait till the piston's out. I can kind of get a bit of it. I mean, we bought, essentially, we both bought a TNT 125 each, a little monkey bike each, and <laughs> mine drew out, but well, I think we're in the first. Two nights of rain in mine. I rode down a mudslide and spent several hours trying to drag it back up. Both of us. And also, we got up to all sorts of mischief on them too, and unfortunately, both bikes took the hit quite severely. I eventually tried getting my, uh, well, pretty much I thought the most bike could be a summer's for a few points, and one time I risked it too much. And just lost the bike underwater, completely killed the engine. And I'm guessing his over time, it just <laughs> we ran it to oblivion. Or I don't know, actually, I mean, we kept good care of the engines and whatnot when it needed the service, we gave the service. But for some reason, his engine did that. Mine was more definitely more my fault. Than that had Also recommend to people if you ever replace and brake pistons, go titanium. They cost a bit more, or sometimes not even more, but they're always worth it. The yeah, FGR's got them, and see all this raw seal, this corrosion. It doesn't happen on titanium. It just doesn't happen. I've not. I took them off when I went to do them on mine. I was, I was expecting the worst because I hadn't done them, and I'll see. Bought it used, so God knows what to expect. And when I took them off, I was shocked to see that the titanium, and because they were titanium, they were absolutely pristine. See, had a bit of dirt on them, but when you clean the dirt off, they shine up real quickly. And I can't get too much of this off because I need to pump it out to put it on. That's that bit for now. That's all you do. You normally get a scrub, a bit of what's it on it. You can normally emery cloth it down. If these are too bad, same as you can see here, I'm going to bring it close, but some of the seal is looking almost done. I'll be a seal rebuild kit, but that one will do us for now. So the, these bikes, even mine still now, mine still after an engine re replacement, 
even though I feel like I'm down and dirty now. Hence his name Swamp Donkey, it spends more time running the swamp than it does on the road, so. Probably why my back, back cover is all seized up. Um, seam down here, this is for your axle's sake. If you look down here. Need to be fair, could I? I might be able to use mine actually. Yeah, I think I might be able to actually get away with using mine. Because mine's not much different to this. Well, actually, you know, it's, it's identical, but for some reason mine escapes the difference. I don't know how this has happened. This is actually quite weird. Yeah, there's the book. Strangely, very strangely, I don't know how this has happened, but because this is polar opposite on mine, it's weird. But on mine, on my donkey, that's pristine. This piece is absolutely pristine, spotless. However, mine don't do that. <laughs> so that is just strange how that is just weird but effectively where his needs attention but doesn't need attention mine is the polar opposite weird that so it just goes to show not all parts wear in the same way it definitely just goes to show, does go to show, not all parts wear in the same way. Don't believe that. I just noticed that, but yeah. Where his is starting to fail, mine is perfectly fine. But where mine's failed, there's not a problem there, a bit of nice grease and clean up, that'd be good as new. Anyway, continue with these. The hand it's same down here. Close corrosion. The can bring the WD40 out, it's brilliant in this kind of job. The WD40. Sometimes you can get away with this. If it's too harsh, you can go with the finer. Go around it. That's going to be good quality on it. Emery cloth. Scotch bright, as you want to call it. Bit of elbow grease. Same with the WD forty, that's your friend. No more of that for me, just use. Shocking thing as well, my donkey it's absolutely filthy. Well, let's understand that it's clean, she's clean. But the absolute shocking thing is her rear axle. It is the one part of the bike that is completely spotless, her rear axle. I've never seen an axle so clean in my life. Especially one that would be would have been seen as much abuse as, as it has. It wasn't like that when I took it out, but with a few bits of army cloth and some elbow roof. <laughs> well, actually, a cheap with a drill. Well, just got the drill to the bolt there and just went down it with that. But it came up absolutely beautifully. And the same as this. Keep at it. Little do we do? Keep the we do on it. We do your friend here. Make a bigger piece. 
As you can see now, it's starting to look a lot better. That's why a brake cleaner hurts when it gets in your eye. <sighs> Watch out for splashback. I don't know if it says you should be wearing goggles. <laughs> Highly advisable we wear goggles if you're using that a lot and shooting it down holes because the splashback will catch you out. Don't ask how I know. It's also extremely flammable. Don't ask how I know that either. Transformation. I can still do more with that. takes me longer to do a normal job it's because I do it to the finest of detail if I take some apart I don't like it going back together unless the entire thing is clean and as good as functioning as it can be I see rust and corrosion like that I just can't put it back in there as it is because I know it will just be a problem later on in life but if I ever have to come to do it again. So yeah, it would it'd take more time. I mean, jobs this way takes a lot, lot, lot more time because, you know, sometimes you just whip it apart and just scrub that. I mean, most mechs, when you pay you them to do it, chances are they'll just give it a scrub down, get that thing moving in, give it a quick scrub down with a toothbrush, and that's it. Same when they change your pads. There's a hard chance they don't even clean all this gross off. They just give it a push straight or quick squirt, push that back in, take your old ones out, put the new one in. They don't even give you a clean up. And then you come back a week later while my brakes seized and don't work properly. Because they might have done that, but they didn't do boot slides and all your boot slides are sticking. Get it. Get you on properly. You can actually see why they can take a little bit longer. If you go to a Mac and they do so they're going to take a bit of time. It's going to take them a while to do overhaul a brake. This is why. Because they might be actually doing it like this. And if they're doing it like this. Commission that man. A woman. A cabbage. A carrot. Whatever gender people are seeing me, they will go mad. <sighs> I don't think we're going to need it completely perfect. Thank you. 
Still some bits at the bottom. And the more I do this, the more it will shine up, the more you can get rid of these little pits and these little black marks. Nicer and nicer and nicer. There's that black bit there. And most of this, like I say, it's pit, and unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do about it. Because even if you clean it up, wash just gets into that area in seconds. Shine and polish metal for days. Something I do not mind doing. I'll have to clean up that part. Nice and shine, another jump. Same for to his, that's gonna need an oil shine up. But even there, I mean, here's a good example. That's what the Scotch Bright is. Um, I should be able to cheat this one. like before that scenario I've not touched yet a good bit of emery and bring it to that we'll see you keep going at it and a bit more of a grease and that restores it to its former glory
just annoying like I said you can't get these bits and these bits buy as a single unit <laughs> well I ain't gonna say that yet because I have a good skill with finding bike parts or find them online the parts suppliers and things like that I have a good skill with that so maybe in time I'll find a supplier or find someone that does these separate bits rather than the whole entire lot um, the next up left is these in here now thankfully they actually don't look too bad that one's gonna be dirty now but a good trick with these fill up fill them with the brake fluid yeah you can see that point for the camera Bubbling away, doing the work for you. And then you take cotton boots. Good job. Stick them in there. Give a good wipe right down like so. You can see it, that's some of the dirt in there coming out. In there, good wipe around and the old grease. So I'll do it on the side, spin it at the bottom. Like that. Yeah, see that? That's what come out. This is pristine. Don't know how I've done that. That in there, pristine. So yeah, he's kept that in pristine. My end, well, his other ends, got a bit rusty in there. But yeah, this end of mine's pristine. That end of his is strange. How that's happened? Very strange. Yeah, a good way to. Get this out. Yes. So here we have some memory cloth and some kind of tool. We can fit it down there. You might be able to get it down there. Shove that down there. I mean, what you could do essentially is just need to pull this entire boot rubber out. This whole thing goes. Through here, these actually can be replaced. All oh, that is rubber in it. The way it's done, if the whole thing's actually rubber, then mine's completely seized in there. So, if I can squeeze this one out, that's all it is. And yeah, that's good news because if that's in his boot rubber, that doesn't mean it can be cleaned out. Which is actually good news. This is all rubber. I mean, I'm not going to do it because normally you can break these, putting them out. These bits can be replaced. You can actually find these little bits as replacements. These are universal little bits of replacements. You know, sometimes these, but some other parts, and that's all going to be lucky. Yeah, that's good news. I've just learned that. But well, that's actually good. Yeah, it's all rubber. I believe it's all rubber. It looks like it. Yeah, it's all rubber. Which is great news for me because obviously all rubber can get on rust, but 
it can easily come off. It's metal that rusts, not rubber. It means I can clean this area up a lot better and a lot easier. Just a block of a bit of that area. But yeah, if you're on that one and you need to go in there, hopefully I don't get his. But yeah, it sticks them down there. Yeah, this one's actually coming up nicely. Sticking to the side. Work away. Okay, Brake cleaner will help you. Icky poo come out. It's actually looking a lot nicer. Isn't it? Yeah, it come out clear now. I'm just checking to see if there is more. It's a crazy area in there. I'll just go get another cup near to be sure. Which for the to turn out. Looking at that now. Maybe the best way is just fill it up. Rub away with that. It's coming out nice and clear now, so it's a good sign. Pretty clean, so that one's alright as well. Very lovely. And it's me spray on that bit.
you can see for this what you just saw me do with that and do with this. A good way with this is if you've got a drill, put the drill bit head on it and give it a spin while you're holding it. I've got a drill on me at the minute. And then not exactly necessary. Keep the WD-40 in there, keep the WD-40 on it. If one this rusty, I probably would take it to the drill. I can already see, looking much better now. Much better. Same again, you can go with that again. You can hit that again. And then still get more down. You can clean up even more if you need to. And just stick a drill bit in, clean away. And that's pretty much it done from there. That's pretty much clean down done. All we do from here is the spray down like that. There, clean. And from there, you do your reassembly. Um, ain't got everything with me here to do it, and it's not on the bike, so there's no point in doing it. But tech, some some grease. A cup of grease, I don't know, before people say anything, do some grease in there, in there, put some grease in there, in there, grease on here, and same on here, put some grease on that, and then you'll put that back in, and that's going to be a few moves, a few times, you know, get some grease in here, this kind of grease, try as best you can to keep that grease away from everywhere else in them on this part you just want it in there and you just want it in there on these two nowhere else and then you'll take a cup of grease with this pushed in it's advisable to push these in as far as it can well just as a little lip showing and then a bit of cup of grease around the edge bit of cup of grease there bit of cup of grease there You've got some plates, so put some cup of grease here where they're going to move. Some here, or you'd like to put a dabble and dabble there because you've got your plates around there and it'll stop them seizing to the thing completely. Um, same on the other metal plate, just a bit of cup of grease helps with the movement. Back of your pads, cup of grease, cup of grease, cup of grease, cup of grease, put it in. Never assemble a brake caliper just completely bone dry, you don't do it. Anyone that does it, it's going to seize up very, very quickly. 
people may say, you know, you shouldn't be putting grease in a brake system. There are certain areas where grease should be in a brake system, and if it's not in there, you're going to have some problems. Like mine. But yeah, that's pretty much all I can film for now. It's absolutely shutting it down outside and it's getting it late, so there's not much more I can do tonight. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure we'll call this TNT125 caliper stripped down and part clean. Uh, we have a levy at the minute. I've changed all the thermostat. It, it, I don't know who put the hose clamps down there or how they fitted them, but it was absolutely horrible. It's all been changed now. The problem is, um, on our old thermostat, there's just hose going everywhere, and some of the hose clamps, the bolt to do it, is down here. How do you get to it? <laughs> we had to get like some small, really small 6mm spanners to do it all. It's absolute pain, but once that's done, all you got to do is invert the hoses, or take the clamps off and invert the hoses when you reinstall it, it and everything can now be done and dust off. Dust. Why they didn't, well we know why they did it, obviously it costs more, gets more labour out of us. That's all been changed, once the weather gets a bit better, I've got a bit more time. I should be able to make a little video of putting it all back together. But for now this one I have to do. I think I've still actually got some parts of the video that to put up, so lots and lots of work. Very very busy in the AB Mate Lights area. For now it's time for Dindins. If